research professor at the University of Barcelona and the Catalan Institute of Research and Advanced Studies and I'm also a professor part-time here at UCL in London. I've been working in virtual reality since 1991. It's a very fascinating area in which to do research. Why it's got a great interest now is because the hardware is becoming available as a consumer product. So you now you can buy a head-mounted display which is high quality and also relatively cheap. Plus the increased power of computing, it's much more feasible to render very complex scenes now that look kind of realistic than it was a few years ago. The VR has been used for many years for many applications. You can use virtual reality to learn to do some complex tasks safely in virtual reality before you ever do it in reality. It can transport you to another place and as we've discovered more in the last few years, it can transform not just where you are, but who you are. We formed a spin-off company called Virtual Body Works, which takes these ideas and uses them to disseminate useful applications for society. For example, if you take white people and you put them in a dark-skinned body, their actual level of racial prejudice decreases. We find quite amazing things happen like this. We have found that embodiment in a virtual body is very powerful in order to allow us to see the world through the eyes of somebody else. We have used this in the area of rehabilitation of violent behavior. We have developed an application where the aggressors see a violent situation through the eyes of the victim. And this gives them a completely different perspective Everything you might describe in a script has to be turned into something concrete. So this is a lot of work of modelling and programming and motion capture of real people. Human bodies are complex, so they, they have a complex shape, they have usually clothing on, and the colour representations are difficult. Also the way they move is very complex, representing that in virtual reality is difficult. One example of this idea of virtual embodiment is that we used it to make concrete this fact that people talk to themselves. So we all talk to ourselves on the inside. But imagine who I'm talking to is externalised as another person. So what we do is we take people, we scan their real body, so we have a, a likeness of their real body, and on the other side of the virtual room they see another person. For example, it could be somebody like Sigmund Freud, it could be Einstein, it could be anybody. They explain their problem to the person on the other side. Then after that, they are the person on the other side. So when they look at themselves, they see, I am now in the body of Freud, or now I'm now in the body of Einstein. And they see and hear themselves, their previous incarnation, say the problem. And now as Freud or Einstein, they say, well, I think you could address the problem this way. And then they're back in their own body and they hear with a disguised voice, Freud or Einstein tell them how to address this problem and they can keep switching between the two bodies until they reach a resolution. So this is this example of what we call virtual reality self-talk. We objectify the talking to yourself by talking to another virtual character who is also you.